Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will discuss about fibrous dysplasia. In our previous lectures we have discussed about the ossifying fibroma and juvenile ossifying fibroma but today we will discuss about fibrous dysplasia. So uh, it is a developmental tumor like condition the fibrous dysplasia. Uh, replacement of the normal bone by an excessive proliferation of cellular fibrous connective tissue intermixed with irregular bony trabeculae. Okay, this is a characteristic feature of one of the characteristic feature of fibrous dysplasia. It is a sporadic conditions and it is due to the post-zygotic mutations in the GNAS1 gene. Okay. So the clinical severity of the condition depends on the point in time during fetal or postnatal life that the mutation of GNAS1 occurs. We will elaborate this point. Okay. Uh, undifferentiated stem cells during early embryological life if you know uh, the mutation that occurs uh, in undifferentiated stem cells during early embryological life uh, the osteoblast melanocytes and endocrine cells all will carry them uh, that mutation and express the mutated gene so this will lead to clinical presentation of multiple bone lesions here we can see the osteoblasts were there they, uh, they were carrying the mutated gene okay so it will lead to multiple bone lesions and then the cutaneous pigmentation we have talked it about the melanocytes so it will lead to cutaneous pigmentation and then we have talked about the endocrine cells so there will be endocrine disturbances as well if the mutations occur in skeletal progenitor cells at later stages of embryonic development and it will lead to multiple bone fibrous dysplasia also known as the polyosseous uh, fibrous dysplasia okay if the mutation occurs during postnatal life it will lead to uh, you know single bone uh, fibrous dysplasia also known, known as the monostotic um, fibrous dysplasia we will discuss about these things later on uh, here is the image uh, of a fibrous dysplasia of the mandible in a girl of 16 years here you can see the uh, growth over this area and this is fibrous dysplasia case okay again we have the fibrous dysplasia uh, expensile mass of the left maxilla uh, in a 45 year old woman okay this lesion was known to have been present for at least 20 years so it means that uh, the fibrous dysplasia will grow uh, very slowly okay okay we will discuss about monostotic fibrous dysplasia of the jaws it means that single bone will be involved in fibrous dysplasia okay this is single bone disease uh, it may occurs into 80 to 85 percent cases of fibrous dysplasia and the diagnosis will be done uh, during the second decade of life both male and female will be you know affected equally uh, it will cause the painless swelling okay and growth is generally slow that is why you know uh, this lesion was in the mouth for about you know 20 years okay because the growth is generally slow and in monostotic fibrous dysplasia maxilla is more often uh, involved than mandible okay if maxillary lesion is present it may lead to you know involvement of the adjacent bones like the zygoma sphenoid and occipital bones uh, and uh, uh, the teeth uh, in the area of the you know uh, fibrous dysplasia will be displaced by the bony mass but they will remain firm okay uh, it is very important point the chief radio radiographic feature of ground glass appearance okay it is this the, there will be glass that will be hazy opacity having this hazy opacity it will not be completely completely transparent it will be like hazy opacity we will show uh, this you can see here this uh, this is the ground glass appearance you can see here this is basically the ground glass this is not completely transparent okay this haziness is present in this glass so it will look like this and this is known as ground glass appearance we have studied about ground glass appearance in our previous lectures like it was present in the juvenile ossifying fibroma as well but it is more characteristic uh, here in the fibrous dysplasia okay and these lesions are not well demarcated uh, in the earliest stages the lesions may be largely radiolucent or mortal okay this is the image okay fibrous dysplasia occlusal radiograph of the mandible is taken and showing localized expan expansion of the mandible and the ground glass appearance 
the margins of the lesion are not well defined okay they are blend uh, into the adjacent bones so margins are uh, never uh, they uh, they will be never you know uh, well demarcated they will always be blend into the adjacent bone okay so this was the ground glass okay so uh, if the mandible is involved the ex this will lead to the expansion of the lingual and you know, the buccal plates and also bulging of the lower border will be there okay and it will cause superior displacement of the inferior alveolar canal okay and there will be one more char characteristic feature one of the characteristic feature okay that will be the narrowing of periodontal ligament space here you can see we cannot see uh, properly the periodontal ligament space around the roots okay here you can see there is no uh, you know uh, the there is no space around the roots the periodontal space which should be there and one more thing this 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 uh, you know uh, these findings may also be there in hyperparathyroidism so that is why i use the word that it may be one of the characteristic feature of the uh, fibrous dysplasia okay so if maxilla is involved then it will lead to the displacement of the sinus floor superiorly and commonly obliterates the maxillary sinus okay all right if uh, um, okay we are discussing the monostatic fibrous dysplasia most characteristic radiographic feature will be increased density of the base of the skull involving the occiput sphenoid roof of the orbit and frontal bones so in a, this will be present in the cases where the maxilla will be involved okay all right now we'll discuss about the polyostotic fibrous dysplasia it may be related to the you know jeff lichenstein syndrome and mccune albright syndrome we will discuss about these syndromes as well uh, okay uh, if two or more bones are involved then it will be known as the polyostotic fibrous dysplasia it is an uncommon condition okay now we'll discuss about the jeff lichenstein uh, syndrome so uh, it will be you know there will be polyostotic fibrous dysplasia thus there will be cephalate uh, pigmentation uh, you know it will look like the coffee with milk we will discuss about this uh, you know cephalate pigmentation in next slide okay uh, so mccune albright syndrome uh, when it will be mccune mccune albright syndrome when there will be polyostotic fibrous dysplasia plus there will be cephalate pigmentation plus multiple endocrinopathies then this will be the mccune albright syndrome and multiple endocrinopathies may include the sexual precocity that is the you know uh, uh, the earliest uh, um, sexual characteristic in female pituitary adenoma or hyperthyroidism okay then we have one more syndrome that is the mesa broad syndrome here you know there will be polyostotic fibrous dysplasia along with the intramuscular myxomas so basically these three jeff lichenstein syndrome mccune albright syndrome and mesa broad syndrome is related to the or associated with the polyostotic fibrous dysplasia here you can see the, there is pigmentation this is the uh, you know calf or late pigmentation and you can see the borders they are irregular we will discuss about this irregularity of the border these are the this uh, you know this is the pigmentation okay so uh, it may lead to the uh, facial uh, asymmetry and pathological fracture, uh, fractures with pain will be there uh, has this is polyostotic fibrous dysplasia so other bones may also be involved other than the bone of the face okay so if leg length uh, yes if leg is involved that is the leg length discrepancy of the upper part of the femur will be there and it will be known as the ochistic deformity okay and there can be hypophosphatemia caused by renal uh, phosphate wasting due to circulating fibroblast growth factor 23 the margins of the cafe uh, cafe or late spots uh, uh, they you know they very they are very irregular resembling a map of the coastline of maine in contrast to the cafe or late spots uh, spots uh, of neurofibromatosis they are smoother and they will look like coast of california okay so these are uh, some you know differences between the cephalate sports uh, sports of the um, you know uh, the polyostotic fibrous dysplasia uh, and the uh, you know that of the neurofibromatosis okay the ne neurofibromatosis cephalate sports will be you know uh, they will be smooth uh, they will be having smooth borders but that of the um, polyostotic fibrous dysplasia 
will be you know irregular okay in McCune and Bright syndrome uh, the sexual precocity uh, which is the menstrual bleeding may occur during the first few months of life breast development and pubic hair may be you know apparent within the first few years of life in affected girls is the most common endocrine manifestation okay uh, this will be the most common endocrine manifestation in patient with McCune and Bright syndrome Okay, now we'll discuss about very important, uh, you know, features. This is the histopathological features. Uh, irregularly shaped trabeculae of the immature woven bone. The woven bone is immature bone and the lamellar bone is mature. Okay, that will also uh, lead to more maturation. So, we'll discuss about the woven bone here. So, there is irregularly shaped trabeculae of immature woven bone in a cellular loosely arranged fibrous stroma. The bone trabeculi are not connected to each other and it will you know uh, it will lead to the Chinese script write writing appearance okay because the bone trabeculi are not uh, connected to each other. There will be tiny calcified spherules as well and it will be you know rarely present and you know if we uh, compare the uh, ossifying uh, you know the ossifying fibroma and also the uh, you know uh, the uh, cemento osseous dysplasia to the uh, fibrous dysplasia there in fibrous dysplasia there will be monotonous pattern uh, woven bone lamellar bone and spheroid particles as compared to that of uh, present in ossifying fibroma and cemento osseous dysplasia okay that is how we can compare the fibrous dysplasia and the ossifying fibroma and the cemento osseous dysplasia okay so uh, again no capsule or line of demarcation is present and classical fibrous dysplasia of the jaws there will be lamellar bone in a moderately cellular connective tissue stroma will be present okay okay if we talk about the treatment and prognosis you know it is a major problem for the surgeon as for the patient as well so if the lesion is smaller uh, you know there can be surgically resected okay that can be surgically resected in many cases the disease tends uh, to stabilize and essentially stops enlarging when skeletal maturation is reached that is, that is why you know fibrous dysplasia uh, the treatment of uh, fi fibrous dysplasia uh, is withhold um, until you know there is uh, uh, you know skeletal maturation okay because if we do uh, a surgery of a patient with fibrous dysplasia there will be recurrence of um, the lesion in younger patient okay we will talk about that as well Minimal, uh, if there is minimal cosmetic or functional deformity, then no surgical treatment will be needed, okay. Uh, in cosmetic deformity with associated uh, psychological problems or functional deformity, we will do, you know, surgical contouring of the bone. Uh, 25 and 50 percent of patients show some regrowth after surgical shave down as I have told that that is why, you know, in younger patients, we do not do any surgery and we wait until the skeletal maturation is reached okay uh, there is uh, you know uh, some uh, in some cases uh, bisphosphonate therapy is given to the patient and it may you know you know it may cause pain relief and improve skeletal strength but you know there are some complication or adverse effect related to the bisphosphonate therapy like uh, it may you know uh, lead to the osseo um, osseous necrosis okay uh, bisphosphonate induced uh, osteonecrosis okay so that is why uh, this need more um, further studies uh, the bisphosphonate therapy and uh, yes it may lead to malignant changes and it um, in very rare cases and it may lead to osteosarcoma especially in the cases where radiation therapy is done on uh, for the patient of um, fibrous dysplasia so that is why radiation therapy is contraindicated uh, in the patient with fibrous dysplasia if you talk about mesobroth syndrome there there are you know more chances of sarcoma development in those patient these are the references some very good books you will need these books for your exam prep so you should purchase these books and you should uh, study these books okay that's it uh, that is this me dr jk if you like my video please subscribe to my channel and you have any question regarding fibrous dysplasia i am here to answer just uh, drop uh, uh, in the comment box okay comment box i am here i will tell you about uh, uh, everything i know about fibrous dysplasia i will try my level best and uh, please subscribe to my channel and click on bell icon for 
uh, more videos i will try my level best to make more and more videos on oral path and other stuff so uh, till then take care and bye bye